we will lose more wildlife. It's a, just a matter of fact. Jackson is growing and will continue to grow. As it is growing, if we can think about the best ways to develop and grow the Snake River Corridor in the interest of preserving the wildlife that we have, that's the best thing that we can do. This river corridor coming out of the upper reaches in the central heart and lungs of the National Park System is a linear system. And like an artery inside your body, if you put your thumb on that artery at any one specific point, it degrades how well things can flow along it. And that can happen with just human presence, bridges, cars, parks, our homes, our pets, all of those things are things that uh, wildlife tend to avoid or are frightened of and it changes how they are able to use the corridor in an energy efficient manner. The Snake River Riparian Corridor and riparian corridors across the West are really these green ribbons of resources that animals from miles around need to access. They control water resources, they have higher vegetative productivity, and the cover that they provide is really important for animals as they move across the landscape. For example, in the Jackson area, where there is a lot of development, the cover and security that's offered by these areas sort of acts as a lifeline for animals to move up and down the valley as they sort of navigate their way through development. Jackson is very hemmed in by public lands. So actually, Teton County, Wyoming, 97% of the physical space of the county is public lands. That means that people that live in Jackson Hole or in Teton County are developing, they're building their houses and their roads and businesses in a very small space. The Snake River Corridor flows through this very small space. We're seeing a lot of development pressure in this area right now because it's beautiful, it's a wonderful amenity for our community, and it's beloved by people not only in this area but throughout the world. It's really important for recreationalists and it's visited by many, many people every year. So we really need to be conscious of the changes that are occurring here and be thoughtful and strategic and nimble about the steps we're taking to protect it. We need to remember that we can make small changes. Those cumulatively can have a big impact. So. When you think about an animal moving across the landscape that has to jump over, you know, maybe just a fence in one backyard, they actually cross many of those fences throughout the day. Or if an unleashed pet chases an animal, you know, if that happens several times throughout the day, the animal uses a lot of calories, it expends a lot of energy, and it's extremely stressful. So we need to be thinking about those cumulative impacts and how those add together to have impacts on the landscape. It's important to remember that private lands function in this mosaic across the landscape. And so we have this kind of puzzle of land ownership across the landscape. So it's really important for landowners to remember that their piece of land functions as part of that whole because animals are moving across the landscape and they do not recognize property boundaries. A landowner that wants to protect their land and to preserve wildlife habitat can put a conservation easement on their property and they can take smaller steps to help wildlife. So they can open gates, they can make wildlife friendly fencing modifications, they can put window markers on windows that are hit by birds frequently, they can preserve native vegetation. One thing that is really important to remember is that vegetation structure in riparian areas is really important. So those low hanging cottonwood branches and deadfall and dense willow corridors, those are all incredibly important for wildlife. This increase in human population and growth and development, it, it will lead to declines of moose. In addition, the increasing number of vehicles on the road is ruining the permeability of that landscape. It truncates moose's ability to get from one side of the road to the other. It's the same thing that fences do. It's the same thing that housing developments do. It creates an impediment and then in some cases a barrier to wildlife movement and Wyoming 390 has so much traffic on it that it's 
it's pretty amazing that moose can even successfully cross the road and get the resources they need. One of the problems for us humans is we innately don't know which activities and behaviors that we do that are degrading or negative. If common sense told us all of that, we wouldn't have the problems, the ecological problems that we have today. But it isn't innately known to us. It takes some study and some expertise to know the little tiny things that you do that make a difference in how conservation can take place uh, versus degradation.